Andre Lutz is a South African artist whose first international showcase, Ants in NYC, in New York City, has received rave reviews. She's joining us from New York via Skype to talk a little bit more about her showing and her success. Lorraine, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Now, as I understand it, Ants in NYC was your first international showcase. Did you anticipate it was going to be the success that it currently is? Uh, no, I had no idea. It was literally just a box that I wanted to tick in my mind, you know, like an international exhibition and New York would be like a cherry on top, you know, so I wasn't, I, I went with, without any expectations. Talk us through the nitty gritties. How many um, paintings did you exhibit? Where did you show them? And as I understand it, you painted some new ones in New York too. So since the 2013 and 2014 shows, the originals had been sold out. I had no choice but to exhibit the prints of these works. Um, so I had these um, museum etching, Hannah Mueller, beautiful prints to exhibit of the two collections. So that was 730 of those. And then I really wanted to have some originals available. So um, during my time in New York, I painted a collection of 10 um, iconic New York kind of, you know, paintings. And I also had the retrospective prints of both years on sale, so the big A0 prints. And that was it. I had to laugh because I saw via your Instagram account that in addition to New Yorkers pouring into the gallery in Brooklyn, you said that South Africans actually also really showed up in droves. There were so many. I had no idea there were so many South Africans in, in Brooklyn. And obviously, I invited all the friends that I knew were here, but that was about 10 or 20 people. And I, I lost count at like 40. I don't know. I wish we'd been frying on the sidewalk or something. <laughs> You could have even offered to wash some New Yorkers um, windscreens, you know, at, at the traffic lights. Take the opportunity. <laughs> Lorraine, tell us a little bit more about these paintings for ants and then what became postcards for ants. Well, paintings for ants started as a project um, where I just wanted to spend an hour a day finishing an artwork. Um, and I had decided that I didn't want to be an artist and that was not what I wanted to do. Um, so I, I, I knew that if I, I was working nine to five, I wouldn't make time to paint. And I decided to set aside an hour a day just to finish something in, in completion. And the only thing I could finish in that time would be a miniature. And so I was doing a business course at the time and I kind of put the idea together and, you know, packaged it as paintings for ants and, you know, in, insinuated that people could book dates and birthdays and things. And that's how it was born. Um, and by the end of the year, I didn't want to stop, so I decided to, to do 365 postcards for ants, which uh, was Cape Town themed. So every painting had to be something to do with Cape Town, and we, we printed postcards of these paintings that were sent out. But it didn't stop there, because as we speak, you didn't give up art. In fact, you are an artist, and you <laughs> continued with a new project. Um, yeah, my plan kind of blew up in my face, really. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm busy with my third project this year. I'm, I'm doing 100 paintings in total, um, which has been really nice because it means that I can take up, take on other opportunities like exhibiting in New York. There's just no way I would have been able to do it if I was still painting eight hours every single day. Well, yeah, that's the story, is that it now takes me eight hours to paint one piece. <laughs> Now, you painted through really significant milestones in your life. Um, during those two years, you got engaged. You painted on your wedding day. Was there ever a day where you were tempted to say, I don't want to paint today, or look, I'm getting married, I don't have time? I mean, how did you manage to fit all that in? Um, the wedding was fine because I knew, I knew it was coming and I knew what to expect and, and I, you know, I knew to put time aside and my husband understands and you know, it's been going on for two years, so you know it. Um, but I think the hardest time for me was when I had food poisoning um, and I just could not sit up straight and I, I just really wanted to throw in the towel at that stage and luckily my husband nursed me back to health for that two hours that I needed to finish it. This is so exciting for all of us back home, just watching this unfold um, via social networks and even your interview with American news sites. Um, is, it, is it overwhelming for you as a South African artist to be receiving all this attention and to have the whole country's eyes on you, essentially? 
it's weird because it's been overwhelming from the start. You know, it, it, I, I never expected to go anywhere. It's just a personal project. And every person that's written a blog post and every newspaper that's written an article has been overwhelming to me. So for me, this is just more of the same kind of overwhelmedness, you know. And, you know, it meant a lot to me when, when South African media kind of celebrated the project. And to me, American media is kind of the same thing. It's just a different audience, you know. So that's great. I'm super grateful. And it's not just American media because, as we know, Neil Patrick Harris is a Lorraine Lutz fan. He owns two of your paintings. Yeah, he's such a nice guy. He, um, he got in touch with me at the end of last year and um, really wanted to get some paintings. And yeah, that's, that's the story. <laughs> now, when you come back home and continue the project, what around you in South Africa inspires you to paint? Well, I... 365 paintings inspired by Cape Town. So there's really, it's never ending for me. I love everything about it. I love animals and nature and, you know, even things like the buildings and the people. It's just really, I, I remember when I first started my Cape Town project, people would say, how are you going to come up with 365 things that you want to paint? You know, there aren't that many things. And I still, I can do another 365 easily. There's just so much. Well, luckily for us, there is so much for you to paint. And how can we follow along on social media if somebody who's watching this video desperately wants to get a hold of a print, wants to buy some of your work, where can they go? The best way to kind of keep up to date with things is to follow my Instagram account, because that's where I post everything. And that I manage that account personally at all times. So for the New York show, I had someone managing my Twitter account and helping me out with that. Um, Instagram is the best place and then for any inquiries regarding commissions and events and all of those things you can email admin at lorraine.com. Well Lorraine enjoy the last few days in New York and we're certainly looking forward to seeing what you get up to in the coming year. Thank you so much and thank you for having me. Bye-bye.